All right, so to do the data entry section, all we have to do is to collect the user input and display it. We are not using a database, so we'll simply display it in a pop-up message box. So let's double click the accept button and create the event. And first, let's create a variable that will hold all the data entry from all the text boxes. Basically, we will concatenate all the information entered into text boxes into one string. So string, I'll call it data entry. And now, before we try to process the input, we of course need to validate it. We need to make sure that all the information was entered. In our case, what we want is all text boxes filled, so if any of the text boxes is empty, we want to display an error message. Since this is a simple example, we can just use a simple if statement and check if any of the text boxes is empty. So we'll do an if and check if the name is empty, so if the text that equals empty or if the txt address is empty or I'll put it on the next line so you can see it better it's the txt city dot text if that one equals empty or the next one is the state and finally we have the zip so if any of these is empty then we'll display an error message that the input is not valid and we'll display it in a message box so message box that show and we can simply do something like each box must have an input and it, the text in the window will be error or we could do invalid input or whatever you want and we'll display the button, let me just put it again on the new line so you can see it better. So for the buttons, all we want is the OK button. And finally, for the icon, we want the message box icon to be, well, you can choose error or information. So let's do error because it's an invalid input. So again, if any of the text boxes is empty, we'll display an error message that the boxes need to have an input. So next, we can reset the focus to go back to the first text box, because we display the message and we want the user to re-enter the information. So we can simply do txt name dot focus. And last, we return from this method. We do not want to process anything else because the input is not valid, so we'll just do return, of course, on the new line. So this will stop the event from executing and return the focus back to the txt name. If the input is valid, meaning all text boxes have some text in them, we can now construct the text and display it in the message box. So after the if statement executes, and if it, the return is not executed, that means that all the text boxes are filled. So now we can construct the text. So we will do the data entry string, and we'll start it with the name from the city, I'm, I'm sorry, from the name, so text from the text box txt name. And on the new line, so we will do the return and new line, like that, we can display now the address, so txt address.txt, and again we'll do the return and new line. Actually, it's supposed to have a slash before r as well. And then we will also add the city, so txt city 
dot text and I'm sure you already know what it's gonna be doing so it's R and N and then there is the state we we'll concatenate the return the line and finally the zip and we don't need the return there because that's the last information so now a data entry string contains a long string with the information from the text boxes and we can now display this string in the message box so message box dot show and we'll simply display the data entry and we can put a name to the window to the pop-up box let's just call it data entry and again all we need is the OK button so our message box buttons that OK and we don't need any icon for this so once the message is displayed and viewed we can prepare the form for another data entry so we will clear all the text boxes but remember we already have the needed logic coded for the click event for the clear button so we can actually reuse it but in our case the clear button has everything inside its own click event so if you come over here you can see when we click the click button uh, the clear button this is executed all the text boxes are cleared now we could of course simply create a method and pass all the logic in it and then just call the method from the click event and frankly that would be actually more preferable especially if you want to reuse it like this however I want to show you that you can actually call a click event of another button from a different event for a different button. So the event we want to call is called btn clear, which is this. So let's call that btn clear. And here when I press that, you can see that I have actually a lot of options available to me. And one of the method and the one that I'm interested in is called perform click. If I type perform click, you can see that it generates a click event for a button. And it, the button that it generates it for is the clear, because that's the one that has assigned the event btn clear underscore click. So we'll just call this perform click on the button clear event. All right, so that should do it. Let's see how it works. Again, I'm gonna press Control F5 to run it. And it runs, okay. So now let's enter the information. We can start the timer as well. So let's start the information. I'll enter my name, some address, some city, some state, and some zip. And when I press accept, and I can just move by tab, you can see that we have the window here that says all the information and each of it on its own line. When I click OK, it should all clear and the focus is back to the name text box. And the timer is still running. I can pause it if I want to and then everything is disabled as it should. All right, actually, you know what, let me run it again because let's now test we tested the tab, it works okay, but now let's do the shortcuts. Remember we have the alt and certain letters that create the shortcut. So let's do again Powell, blah blah blah, more, and some zip. And now I press alt A and that should press the accept button. So let's try that. And it did. You can see that now I have the window little pop-up message here. And I can start the timer by pressing Alt S and it seems to be working correctly. It pressed it and Alt P pauses it and it does and Alt X exits the program and it does. So this is working correctly so far and there's still a few things that we can do to improve the usability a bit. First, we should be able to move between text boxes by pressing Enter. So when the user enters text, in a text box and presses enter, the focus should be set to the next text box. Just the same way as it works with the tab. 
and we should make sure that zip code only allows for numbers. Now of course many countries have zip as combination of numbers and letters, but bear with me, this will allow me to kind of show you how to set up events for key presses so only numbers are allowed. So I'll see you in the next video.